Hmm. Uh, he has uh, endeavored to open other society. He went to the United States of America. He was the first uh, Burmese president to go in many years in uh, 2013, met President Obama. So President hmm. Obama also brought down the level of sanctions. There are still more sanctions to be right. lifted. And hmm. he has said that if uh, the election actually yields a democratically, uh, a real democracy, I'm sure, all those other sanctions would be limited, will would be lifted. So in a certain way, a major, major uh, move forward. Mm -hmm. it, what has to be seen is how does the army accept it. Right. Uh, there has been no reaction from what is called the Tatmadaw or mm -hmm. the uh, army as it is called, mm -hmm. which is uh, present in every walk of life. Uh, runs everything and the people of Burma do not expect very much because they have seen over the years that every attempt at openness has been put down heavily, brutally. Mm. But this time uh, there is I think a certain kind of promise that the army will accommodate, they would allow uh, NLD to actually come to power and that is how it seems at the moment. So I think uh, a new beginning which is very, very visible. Mm -hmm. And although uh, Aung San Suu Kyi is unlikely to be the president, right. uh, she has spoken uh, to the media because at some mm. stage what was really happening is people had begun to question that if NLD is coming to power, mm. then who is going to run? No, I mean, there is no president, there is nobody right. except Aung San Suu Kyi who is mm. not going to be the president. So she assured that I am going to be above the president. So mm. it has to be, uh, it will be a government which will be guided by her. There would be people whom she trusts who would you know hold mm -hmm. minor positions or even become vice president mm -hmm. uh, in different ways and then a new president could be elected. But largely what is going to be initiated when uh, this entire thing is done is to usher in political reforms mm -hmm. and everybody is very keenly watching right. including uh, the uh, prevention of people like Aung San Suu Kyi to come to power mm -hmm. primarily because she has spouse or uh, children who are foreign national. Mm -hmm. So those things have to be sorted out. And the other issue that uh, uh, Mr. Sajjan Jha raised was mm -hmm. the lack of inclusiveness. Mm -hmm. So this election may have taken place. Uh, but what is not visible is the uh, inclusiveness, you know, the minorities have been kept out. It's right. largely 65% of the Burman population which is which is actually stepped out and voted. Hmm. There have been 800,000, uh, you know, um, uh, Rongya Muslims whose votes have uh, not hmm. there. Hmm. You don't have a single Muslim candidate of the NLD or USDP hmm. uh, who's uh, contesting the election. So in a certain way, it's a very, very communal, very sharp focused election that's taken place. Between itself, it is fine, but still in a certain way illiberal because mm -hmm. it doesn't include everybody. Right. We'll, we'll so it's a bit worrisome. It. We'll talk about that point in greater detail. But uh, Dr. Jha, uh, how do you view these elections and uh, what happens next? Of course, these are preliminary, preliminary results that, ha that have come out. Uh, but what happens uh, next after we've got the results in terms of who's going to be the next president of Myanmar? Uh, I take this uh, results uh, with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying this is because of the fact that it's conditional upon the uh, military, how it really wants to accommodate the mm. new power configuration which is emerging. Right. I would highlight two major issues which might be of concern for, for both uh, those people who really uh, observe Myanmar very closely. First, the upper strata of the military which is aging mm. has the willingness to give up the power. But then you have a second tier of generals who are young who want to also enjoy the power and the prestige that was mm. attached with it. Mm. You are not addressing that or oh, your strat of it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, within NLD, apart from Aung San Suu Kyi, can you really list the second tier of leaders mm. which is just not there? Now within these two planks there will be struggle. Mm. And how the military accommodates Aung San Suu Kyi rise to the power and possibly in future she either she becomes speaker or uh, might be the uh, person behind the so called president, mm. that needs to be seen. And on the second hand, you need to understand the very fact that Myanmar has an institutional setting which is more accommodative towards military rule. You can't build structures overnight and say this is a democracy, we can do it like this. Hmm. Because that edifice needs to be built up and it will take time. Mm -hmm. So if you see in 2016 everything will be hunky-dory, everything will be done, uh, kindly take your reservations to it. And, and the last thing I want to really address this thing is that Given the fact that many other nations are looking to the Myanmar elections with, uh, uh, with apprehension as well as they are, they are glorifying that look this is the, this is the dawn of a new uh, era, a new century and all those mm. things. But 
invariably you see you see the resources the foreign direct investment and all those things are subject to the conditions that military retains mm -hmm. does not retract on its commitment to the democracy right. so i will really be uh, not to uh, to forward looking in on, into it i will still give some time maybe two or three months to really uh, nudge how it things will be going and thien sen his mm -hmm. role mm -hmm. he is the most potent guy who can make this transition mm. much more comfortable right so i will be closely observing what thien sen is really mm. making to do and what he is has promised to yes, accept yes, these yes. results so but he will be the major bridge between military and the nld for that matter mm -hmm. uh, dr singh you know this is not the first time uh, the nld has won such a mandate or is on its way to uh, get a, a heavy mandate in its favor um, in, there were polls in 1990 which were completely rejected which were nullified by the military uh, what can we expect Uh, what will be the role of the military from here on will they be uh, receptive to this mandate i think what we need to uh, again uh, keep reminding ourselves is that uh, the military has been dominating myanmar for uh, five decades hmm. and uh, the changes that have taken place in myanmar have been with the concurrence of the military so long as the military was willing to accept the change those changes were possible the changes that we are now hoping will take place in myanmar will also depend on how much the military is willing to change mm -hmm. and uh, it is very important uh, for them uh, whether they are able to see the writing on the wall or not because the election results if they are very uh, come out very clearly in favor of the national league for democracy and dong thong suu kyi uh, perhaps uh, the power of the military will gradually erode but the main point that has to be made is that it will be gradual mm -hmm. the process uh, of change in myanmar <coughs> cannot be uh, overnight it will have to be a gradual process mm. and uh, we will need to see how uh, the military takes this change mm -hmm. and this change is not only political change it will have to be